compelling detective story, a cloak and dagger action and a romantic drama, all these stories were taken from real life. The history of Kazakhstan is inseparable from the world history. Reflections on history, our version. Common ground. A tall, dark-haired foreigner knelt on one knee before the Seno. Doing this, he managed to show respect while not losing his dignity. He was wearing stockings and a coat with long sleeves. His distinctive appearance and behavior caught Amir Timur's interest. The diplomat was polite and he did not show surprise, although the Spanish public figure was amazed at the new world. As soon as Spanish envoys and other ambassadors from different countries sat in order, a lot of boiled salted mutton and roast horse meat was served. It was put on large round leather dishes with handles. Such dishes as kazi, karta and beshparmak were popular at the court of Emir Timur. There was so much meat that if we could take it, it would be enough for half a year. The Spanish ambassador wrote in his diary describing the large reception in detail. However, the grand event finished unexpectedly. Only an adventurer could leave Spain to go to the Kazakh steppe and pay visit to Tamerlan in Samarkand. It is interesting that Amir Timur did not oppose the Spaniards' intention to become familiar with the empire and find some common ground. On the contrary, he supported it. However, the common ground remained a mystery. It is known that Klaviko went back through Kazakhstan on his way back, but the envoy did not describe his route in detail for some mysterious reason. It remained a Spanish secret of the Kazakh steppe. Three cities which are situated in Kazakhstan now were described in his memoirs. According to some data and information provided by his traveling companions and the members of Timur's court, Roy Gonzalez was seen together with Timur. Moreover, it was written in Old Spanish, the language of that period. Thus, it should be studied in the original language. Chapter 1. The Great Silk Diplomacy The Spanish capital begun here. La Latina is the oldest area in Madrid. The Spanish king Henry III, like many other European monarchs, feared that Tamerlan will try and conquer their countries. This is why he sent ambassadors to Tamerlan in 1403. Perhaps he wanted to become friends with him to prevent any possible conquests. Roy Gonzalez de Clavijo, the royal officer to King Henry. The envoys headed by Clavijo brought the king's letter and presents to Amir Timur. Besides promoting diplomatic and military cooperation, the travelers had other duties too. They went there to get information. They had to find out about areas unknown to them, the balance of power in the region and established commercial and trade relationships. It was a phenomenon that they adopted the same scheme, which had been carried out by the Golden Horde, Genoa and Venice previously. The only difference lay in the fact that now the Silk Road went through Tamerlan's land. First, the Emir established an infrastructure copy in the Golden Hordes. This method was described in Roy D. Gonzalez's diary in detail. He had to notice and document everything. He did it because he had to provide his notes as a report. To a certain extent, this was the reason why he did it. Details, including scientific and technical ones, played an important role in the report. He found that the latest achievements of civilization unknown to the Europeans in that area at the time, where he had expected to see just wild steppe. 
The envoys spent a night in a large inn, which had been built for travellers, as there was nowhere to stay because it was too hot and there was a lack of water. Underground water supply tubes took 24 hours to reach their destination. Foreigners had to pay a double duty at caravan stations where they could change horses. These places were safe. The province or area where caravan robberies or other similar crimes took place had to pay money. The head of the province had to pay double compensation to merchant victims and five times compensations to Timor. It was said that even a child who had a purse full of gold could easily go from the Black Sea to Otra. A steady source of income is necessary to maintain one's power. What can serve as a source of income? Trade, development and guaranteeing safety. The road provided Timor with much more money than looting foreign cities did. The road enabled Timor to establish his empire. It took envoys half a year to get to the capital of his empire. Chapter 2 – Reality Throughout the Ages The Madrid National Library holding Clavico's manuscripts is a place where worlds and epochs get in contact. They are arranged chronologically and alphabetically on the shelves. I intend to leave these memoirs as morals for my descendants and in order to preserve the memory of the journey to distant and unknown lands. Descendants study each line of these memoirs and it seems that time turns back. The Spanish knight was not invited to the reception given by the emir immediately. Timo's dignitaries explained to Clavico that more important guests were expected and they had to wait for the audience. While waiting, the important guest from Spain was writing in his diary. According to one of his most mysterious pages, the Amazons lived in Timur's country, on the border of the present-day Kazakhstan and China. Up to now, they follow the custom of not getting involved with men. Only when a certain season comes, they go to their neighboring lands. On seeing them, men invite them. They choose those who they like and go with them. Afterwards, they return to their land. The daughters they give birth to live with their mothers. If sons are born, they are sent to their fathers. It seems that somebody told him about the Amazons. The inquisitive Spaniard was interested in everything. In addition, he had to give a report on life in areas conquered by Amir to the king. Perhaps Javico left Temelan's capital to seek information. He also visited the regions of present-day Kazakhstan, probably went to Yasei or Turkestan. It was one of the pearls of the Silk Road. It was at the beginning of the 15th century. Of course, he was told about the large construction of the mausoleum Ahmed Yasavi, which was underway. It turns out that Timur did not ruin the previous construction. He only finished and decorated it. As a result, the small mausoleum became a magnificent building. However, the bricks of the first mausoleum of Ahmed Yasavi have remained and it is possible to touch them. Information about architecture was given in many diary entries written by the Spanish nobleman. He constantly went on excursions to various places, mosques and sanctuaries. Of course, Tamerlan had to boast that it was a grand project too. He tried to erect a magnificent building, which could emphasize the majesty of himself and his empire. However, the diary does not contain the construction blueprints, which is not surprising because a person could be executed for divulging secrets of architecture. It is probable that those pages were lost because, according to researchers, many pages are missing. We still have a lot to study about his life, which includes how much time he spent in certain places, what regions of Central Asia and present-day Kazakhstan he visited, and what steppe towns he visited, and a lot of other matters. 
There are assumptions that he could only visit Sauran and even Taraz. In this manuscript, many names were mangled and the names of many towns were not mentioned at all. It is often impossible to recognize what kind of place was described there because a lot of settlements were built in the same way in Central Asia. Nevertheless, the witness evidences are of great value. Every evidence is like a piece of gold which is very important since it can clarify the history of medieval Kazakhstan. Chapter 3 – Between the Lines The world heritage is preserved behind the solid walls of the classic writers. His diary holds one of the most important places among 30,000 manuscripts. Let's read Between the Lines. It is not that he embellished reality, but as a true diplomat, he depicted it in accordance with the political moment. The manuscript shows the development of relationship between Timur and Tokhtamish. Klavikho mentioned that a son of the last Khan of the Golden Horde was in the court. He wrote about renewed friendship between the two sovereigns who were against General Yedige. The diplomat referred to the terrible conqueror as Tamabek. He was told that Tamerlan means iron cripple, which sounded insulting. He was from the Chakatai tribe, which came to this land from Tartalia. Tamur Beg's father was a nobleman, but had an average income. In the beginning, Tamabek could provide for himself and five horsemen. Klavikho's memoirs are considered to be the most precious source of information about Central Asia in that period. The manuscripts left by Timur's chroniclers cannot be called unbiased. Klavikho spent quite a lot of time in the court and described their way of life in detail in his diary. At the same time, he concentrated his attention on the fact that the people from the Kazakh steppe were employed in civil service in Timur's empire. Klavikho's manuscript also contains information about enthography. For example, a beautiful saukile, which is a bright headdress. It was like a helmet made of red fabric decorated with a lot of large pearls, rubies and turquoises. A large plum was on the top of it. According to the traveller, Timur did not live in the palaces he built. But in yurts and marquees, the money minted by Timur was called Tenga. The author wrote 120 pages of detailed descriptions. Epilogue an interrupted mission. He just stopped receiving them without explaining any reasons. All the diplomats were ordered to leave the empire as soon as possible. Klavikho tried to clarify the situation, but it was of no use. The Spanish envoys and the others traveled home with the caravan. There is evidence that he went through Kazakhstan too. This is one of the subjects which researchers find potentially interesting to study. They did not take the route that they had followed on the way there, but chose another one, which was on the left and closer to Tartalia. On Friday, November the 21st, the envoys left Samarkand and moved along the good, straight and crowded road. They followed that road for six days and were provided with everything they needed, including food and shelter. Presumably the diplomatic group split up in Atra, the Chinese envoys followed their road and representatives of Babylon Sultan. Turkish and Spanish travelers did theirs. According to another version, the ambassadors split up in ancient Shimkent. The problem lay in the fact that the diplomats probably were not allowed to enter Atra. A week later, Tamerlan arrived there to prepare for a secret campaign against China, but soon died from a disease. After Tamerlan's death, Klavikho's diplomatic mission lost all its meaning. He returned to Spain. His patron, King Henry III, died soon afterwards. Klavikho withdrew from work and started constructing a family tomb where he was later buried himself.
The manuscript achieved popularity when its author was alive and changed hands for many centuries. Since then, many pages or parts of them have gone missing. As for additional sources, they were not studied properly. Thus, it seems that there are many secrets of the journey to be found out in the near future.